Good morning, everybody. Jan Hicks of Jan Hicks Creates. Coming at you with a little diagonal stitching here this morning. There was a, enough of you who requested a video on it. That that's what I'll do. And of course, I am still working on this gorgeous bookmark. Yesterday I got another diagonal done and I started back up here and got a chunk more of the next diagonal done. And that brought me over to the right edge of the pattern. So, thrilled about that. Oh, well, let's see. Um, first, let me say I am by no means an expert at this. I've only been doing it a week. Karen Bug, Blitz Stitch, those are the experts. I haven't watched Blitz Stitches, watched Blitz Stitches videos yet. Um, I will do that probably at some point here this week. But Karen Bug is the one I've been watching, and I will link. In fact, I somebody asked, said that they were having problems finding her videos. I believe she actually has a playlist set up for her diagonal stitching videos, and I will see if I can find a link specifically to that playlist and link that below so you can get the instruction. What I'm going to talk about today, not only a little bit of what I learned from watching her videos, but kind of um, how I'm doing it. I'm not, I guess I would say the most disciplined <laughs> yet of diagonal stitchers. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that too, why I'm not. So let me talk a little bit. I am going to be showing you the pattern a bit today. Um, I think it's going to be in, in small enough chunks that it's not like anybody will be able to do anything with it. But let me show you what I have going on here. So I have my parked threads. These are the ones that I'm currently working with, these ones up here. What you see coming down the pattern are ones that I parked from the previous the previous diagonal. Now, Karen talks about um, when she finishes a diagonal, she cuts off her threads and starts again up at the top of the next diagonal. What I am doing is, because there are very specific chunks of color, let me actually go to the picture and show that to you. Because there are very, and I'm going to zoom in, but it, it starts to look very pixelated as you zoom in, so um, just be aware of that. So because there are very specific chunks of color in this, for me, I'm finding it makes more sense to um, just park the threads in the next stitch that's coming up on the other side of the diagonal. There are times, though, when... Like here, for instance, you'll see a few that are over the diagonal. The diagonal's probably, it's hard to tell because I am not a very um, strict diagonal person. It's probably coming down here. So you can see there are places where I've come over the diagonal, and there's quite a few places. And that is because um, if there's just a couple stitches of a color that I'm working in on the other side of the diagonal, then I will go ahead and do them and end the thread. So what do I mean by the diagonal? Go back to the pattern here. And again, I'm using Knit Companion. So the blue lines are the diagonal and you can see it is going from corner to corner of the 10 by 10 grids. And you can see in the yellow where I've where I've stitched and where I've gone over the diagonal. Now this down here is my previous stitching method, my kind of cross country, quasi cross, quasi cross country. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Um, but up in here, this is where there's been a few stitches where it just made sense to go across the diagonal and finish them off there. No, that's actually previous stitching up in here. 
But anyways, there are places where that happens. I am currently right here. So, all right, so. Let me get myself in order here. What the stitching on the diagonal like this means, so you're working across the 10 by 10 grid on the diagonal. So you're working basically a row at a time. And what that means is that there are a lot of um, threading and unthreading the needle, right? Every time you change colors and some patterns, you know, that some patterns you're going to be able to do a lot and some patterns you're changing the needle with every stitch. And that's almost how it is <laughs> with this pattern. There is a lot of confetti. Now, I don't particularly mind it. I, I thread my needle fairly quickly. I never use a needle threader, and I'm gonna show you. Karen shows one way. The way that she does it is a little different from what I've seen other people do. What I do, you um, can see I have the thread kind of squeezed between my fingers, and you can see a little tip of it sticking out there. You don't want that. I pull it down so it's really hidden, and I squish my fingers up so you can't see the thread at all. And there's my needle. You can see the eye. I basically just push it up through. And even if it's a little fuzzy on the end, if I get it claps, cl pinched down between my fingers where you can't see it, I can just pinch it up through the eye of the needle and it goes in without a problem. I, I find it a very quick way to, to thread. So I have three stitches here that I'm going to be doing. I happen to have three in a row. Woohoo! That doesn't happen very often. Um, so I'll work those three stitches and my diagonal, let's see, on this row, see this thread of brown here? That's the last stitch in this, in this thread, or in this row, I'm sorry. Um, as the diagonal is coming down. So the things I really, I started to talk about what I really like about working this way in my last video, and I kind of forgot a couple of the reasons. I'll try and remember now. I woke up really late this morning. I didn't wake up until like after seven. I never sleep in that long. So I'm feeling a little groggy. I probably sound a little gravelly. My voice isn't quite awake. It is, I haven't told you that yet. It's Friday, August 2nd at 8.28. And yes, it is warm up here in the loft. <laughs> We're getting some rain today, um, hopefully from the, well, it's not a hurricane anymore, the tropical system that was Eric and then Flossie, I guess, coming behind. But they are going south of the islands. I think the big island in Maui are supposed to, they're under flood watches, they're supposed to get the, the brunt of it as the storms pass south. Um, I would not mind having some here. I'm having a hard time seeing this here this morning because my eyes aren't awake yet. This is 28 count, by the way, 28 count even weave. Cross Stitch Collectibles did put their August fractal free fractal up yesterday. It is a study in black, whites, and grays. It is amazingly gorgeous. It's not one that I would probably do. I'm not called to it, um, mostly because I think all of the, the blacks and whites would drive me crazy after a while. So here is what I think is the hardest part about the diagonal stitching, is figuring out where you have to park the needle. And that's probably true of any of the, the parking methods, right? So bear with me while I count here. So this is that. One, two, three. One, two, three. I don't think that's right. Oh, yes, it is. That's over in the other. Okay, there we go. So, um, because there is a lot of unthreading and rethreading your needle, there are probably a lot of a lot of you who will find this just too annoying. 
Um, and, you know, you may want to try the, you know, there's the method of doing a grid, a 10 by 10 grid, um, and then moving diagonally by grid. That may work better for you if you want to try something along these lines that has less of a chance of creating the lines that you see in some people's patterns when they're done or some people's stitching. That's one of the main things that I'm trying to avoid. Even on Harbor Haven, that those big tree trunks, half of the tree trunk was in one month and half of the tree trunk was in the next month. And so um, I, I had lines coming down through those big tree trunks. So I, and I know enough to know that that really annoyed me. I didn't go back and do anything about it, but it really annoyed me. So that's what I'm trying to avoid here. So far, I have no lines on this at all. And perhaps that, that 10 by 10 grid stitching, you wouldn't have lines either. I am not sure. The other thing, so one of the other, see, I'm not sure what direction my, my thoughts want to take me today. Um, I mentioned in my last video that one of the things I found most, um, I don't know whether disturbing is the right word, that I didn't like with the the kind of quasi-cross, quasi-cross country. <laughs> I crack myself up. It's early, people. Give me a break. One, two, three. Where am I going here? I need to be four over. So like I said, that stitch that I just did is the last in the diagonal. And you can see I have some here that are outside the diagonal as well. Up here, these are the last, just, I have a feeling this red here is probably starting the, um, the next swath of red. Because remember, these fractals that they do, they're taking the center of a complete pattern and putting it up for free. So this is probably a red swath starting down here on the complete pattern. Um, and these here were the last stitches in this color in this complete area. So I just did them. Um, so when I say quasi-cross-country, quasi wait, let me figure out where I'm parking this thread. One, two, one, two, three, four, and down. Okay, so diagonal to that. When I say quasi cross country, what I was doing was just kind of, because I have this all cropped together in Knit Companion, I don't know where one page at this point, where one page starts and another ends. So I can't really say I did cross country across a page. I just did it as it made sense where there were stitches of the same color close enough to continue. And then if there weren't any more stitches of that color around, I stopped. Okay, so what I was finding is that there were a lot of single stitches buried in here. That was a pain, and I, I wanted to get away from that. I also would find that because I was doing these jumps, not only would I have problems um, keeping track of where I was, even though I, I'm marking it all off, in Knit Companion as I complete stitches, right? That's what all the yellow, what all the yellow is. Um, I would still have problems. Figuring out, keeping track of where I was, whether it was on the stitching or on the pattern. And mostly that would happen like I'd be stitching along. Okay, I do a stitch. This one I have to have, I happen to do two in a row. Um, and if I finished a stitch, I would look up, you know, if I'm watching TV, if my needle happened to be underneath and I, I look up and look back down, it's like, oh shoot. I would, I would not, it's hard when you are, hold on a second, it's hard when you're in the midst of like this kind of area and you finished a stitch, 
and you have to jump someplace else, it's hard, like even when you tug on your needle a little bit, if there if there's if it's filled in with other stitches, it's hard to know where exactly you were. You can't necessarily see which stitch you just did. And then jumping to find where you went next was kind of a pain. So here's, I'm gonna tell you, talk a little bit right now about why I'm not the most disciplined of diagonal stitchers. Okay, so I just did those two stitches and this next stitch right underneath it here is the same color. I'm going to just go ahead and do that and then park it where it is that down below because it makes more sense to me. I'm not carrying that color like over here someplace in the design on the next row. It's just right below. It's not going to get laid over by other stitches, <clears throat> you know, underneath. It's not going to interfere with other stitches in any way. It just makes sense to me. You know, the, the pure, I guess, diagonal stitching would be complete the row, you know, complete those stitches, park this here where it's coming up, complete that row, and then go to the next row. But it makes sense to me, since I already have it threaded, to just go ahead and do that. And what I mean by catching underneath, so Karen talks in her video about the order that you do stitches in, or that she prefers. So she'll do the stitches that have fewer stitches on the row, and then go back and do the ones that have more stitches because it kind of covers up on the back um, any long carries, I guess. But because this is just like right below, I'm just going to do it. I hope that made sense. I think if you go and watch Karen's videos, it will. Let me mark that off on my tablet. All right, and again, figure out where this goes. And then I, you know, I'm kind of pulling the already parked stitches out of the way. So I have a better, clearer field of view of where I have to park. That is two, so I believe that is right there. Is that right? Oh yeah, it's on the diagonal one, two. Okay, so that goes there. So the other thing I like, okay, so it keeps my, it makes it easier for me to know for sure where I am in the pattern, whether it's on the fabric or on my iPad. The other thing I like, you are parked in the wrong place. Oh, okay, yes you are. When I first was setting up to do this, the first two stitches I put in, I put in the wrong place. I didn't take them out because in this kind of pattern, it doesn't it doesn't hurt a whole lot, but it, I did park this one, the thread in the wrong place on the next row. Hi, vey. Like I said, I slept in, I wasn't really awake. All right, I am gonna take that and park that there. All right. And now I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how I'm not the most disciplined of diagonal stitchers. So again, you're working across a row. You're deciding what stitches go where, which ones you're doing first. And for the most part, you're working left to right. Now, in this particular row, this is the thread I wanna work next because, let me show you this, and again, this is where I'm gonna show you the pattern, but it's so up close, it's not going to, you're not gonna really see a whole lot. All right, so the next one, if I'm working left to right, is this carrot here, right? Well, you can see I worked with that color right here, but when I parked it, instead of dragging the thread the whole way across here, which would be the um, more disciplined way to do it, I guess, I parked it here because I really didn't want to use up all of that thread. Now, of course, on the fabric, on 28 count, it's a very tiny amount. It's not like it's as big as you see here, zoomed in on my pad, on my iPad. But still, I decided I was going to park it here. So I'm going to do these two 
and this one, and then I'm gonna come over and do this one and park it here because there's more of that color down here. So the more um, disciplined diagonal stitchers probably would have carried that thread the whole way over. I am a rebel, what can I say? The other thing I'm not really sure about at this point is how long to have my threads. Some of these are a little bit longer than um, probably is best. I just kind of pulled, if I had thread already cut, pieces already cut in my bags, I just pulled those out and used them. Um, that's a question I have to ask. Like I said, Karen does have the Facebook group for the love of diagonal stitching. I will um, link that up below as well. So doing these two, I'm going to come down and do this one. So I was talking about other things I like about the diagonal stitching. One of the other conundrums, I guess I would say, with the kind of cross country that I was doing was deciding what color to work next. You know, I would, I would kind of pick ones that had more stitches first but there's a certain point where it's like, well, should I do that one first? Well, maybe I should do that one first because if I fill in all that area, then that would make sense for this area down here. But, oh, look, these stitches are still left undone. Maybe I should clean that up a bit and get those stitches done. So there was a lot of debate going on in my brain about what color I should work next. With this, there's no debate. It's all just whatever is in this row my threads are parked right there. So while it may seem that, um, that it's, it takes more time because of all the threading and unthreading of the needle, I think in many ways, um, it's, it, it's speeding me up. I feel like I'm getting more done now, probably a lot of you just asked, well, Jan, are you going to keep doing this or are you going to go back to your other patterns? I don't know. I'm getting a little bit tired of the of the confetti. Um, also because I'm, you know, I can't do the sewing method on this. It's a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm kind of having to hunt and peck a little bit for where the next stitch goes. Okay, that appears to be the last one of that color. I'm looking around on my pattern. And Karen recommends, and I agree with her, it's a, it's a personal choice, just like, you know, much of this is. But Karen recommends that you don't jump more than 10 lines. <coughs> Excuse me, 10 rows. And so that's kind of what I've been going with, the, the kind of that standard. So that is the last one of that color. So now you get to see my back because <laughs> I'm going to end off this thread. Now there are, there are a lot of people like on the, um, there's a thread the other day on the Facebook group, the For Love of Diagonal Stitching Facebook group to show your backs. And several people were saying that they think their backs are neater doing it this way. I'm just going to put that there. Um, that it, it creates a neater back. I am not seeing it yet, really. So I would say this much is what I had done with the previous me method. And then kind of incorporating. And maybe when I get to the more... Um, pure diagonal stitching where I'm not still just filling in. But even so, I, I still think my back, backs are pretty matted is the word I use. So, 
Still pretty though with all those colors, right? And that's one of the things, if you haven't done full coverage cross stitch before, you may not be aware of just how, um, just how matted your backs do look. That's pretty, that's pretty standard because of all the carrying you're doing. Um, and there are times that you really kind of have to dig <laughs> to get your needle through the, the layer of threads on the back. So yeah, I am, I am really quite enjoying this. Like I said, I feel like I'm, I'm getting quite a bit done. I don't know whether it would be as much as um, if I did the grid, the 10 by 10 grid diagonally. You know, maybe when I start um, Farewell to Anger, maybe I'll test out the 10 by 10 grids first. I don't know. I do feel like this is a logical way to do it. And, you know, maybe with the 10 by 10 grid, there wouldn't be as much um, needle changing. There wouldn't be as much... Um, there would still be some hunting for the symbol, but not as much as what I was doing before. So maybe it would be, you know, I don't know, but I, I am really enjoying this right now. And so I'm going to stick with it. I hope you found that useful. Um, I can't think of anything else I wanted to tell you. Like I said, I will link Karen's... Um, playlist for the diagonal stitching below as well as the Facebook group and I'll also link this month's free fractal at cross stitch collectibles if you want to check that out so let me know if you have any questions like I said I am not an expert but I will help you where I can or I will direct you to Karen if I can't help so I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I will See you. I think I will be back on Monday with a, another punch needle. A lot of people, I think, really enjoyed that, and I had quite a few questions that I will try to answer. So until then, have a lovely weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Oh, I did want to mention something else. If you are not on Instagram, if you haven't been on Instagram for a while, Kia B Quilts, um, she is married to Tech Guy in the Hive, they have come up with a kind of a get to know me. Um, one of these question and answers, you post a picture and talk a little bit about yourself. It started yesterday on October, or on October, no, not October yet, August 1st. Um, I, it's a lot of fun to see people's, um, kind of have a, a group kind of introducing each other and getting to know each other. There's a lot of you who are posting on that and I get to see your faces. You know, when you comment a lot, I like to know who I'm talking to and um, I just love that. So I highly encourage you, if you haven't been on Instagram for a while, come and join in. The hashtag is common threaded stitcher. So look for that and join in on the, um, on the month of fun. Until, let's see, until Monday or until I see you on any of the social medias, um, have a great weekend and I will talk to you soon. I love you guys. Bye-bye.